Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. All right, before we get to sports, a couple programming notes and follow-ups. We're talking about cast irons. Fireman Frank checked in, first-time texter. Welcome to the party. And he says, we have a 75-year-old cast iron pan. We use it every day in the firehouse. It's The date is stamped 1950 on the underside of the cast iron. Ooh, what and, if they did that to people? They knew how old they were. <laughs> Just like, boom. What would you put on their forehead? No, I would say like lower back. Like a tramp stamp. Like, oh. <laughs> right, but it's like just instead, it's just like your age, kind of like a car. Like that's where like mm. they're like you know like a Mustang or whatever it is, kind of like the little emblem on their tail. The funny thing is, is the tramp stamp situation. I'm just saying that if the situation is it becomes a somebody you meet, let's say out, and then you get them home and you're going to have relations, you find you out. Check the year on that thing. You have to check the year, but you might be too late if you know what I'm saying. That you wanted to continue the act. Once you see they lied to you about their age, understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I don't. Please explain. No, what are you I, trying I, to say? I'm not, I think everybody understood what I was saying, except for maybe Kenzie and Case. So you're the other two people in the room. <laughs> okay, so so you're the only one who understood. I, I, I'm going to visually show what I'm talking about. Are so, you about underage people? I think he's saying they're lying to say they're younger than yeah, they are. Like she, the person, let's say if it's a woman, uh, maybe she said she was. 29, and then you see her tramp stamp at that point where you're okay. going to do this, and she's like 48, maybe. She just looks really good for 29. Who's doing math that fast? Um, I think I, I could. I, I think I, I could. That would not phase me. I would be like, God, saw it checks out. Well, it's too late at that point. It's too late to do anything. It's too late, so if you're attracted to that person. Yes. And you're already there, so mm. you got attracted. Mm. You're going to find out a different year. and not, That's like a little kid who finds out the ingredients of a dinner they already like. <laughs> What's the problem? I didn't say I would stop. I'm just saying it would be a shock. You're like, I need a 20-year-old, you weirdo. No, I didn't say <laughs> that at all. Spit that's you. That's you assuming all these things. You just gave that example. I'm just saying you'd be shocked by the you're age. Like, oh, no, it's too late. <laughs> It's too Yikes. <laughs> it's too Oh late. no, a grown adult woman. What am I gonna do? She's probably like emotionally in touch and will check all my bull crap. Blech. I can't have that. Uh, <laughs> no, that's bad for I need to be able to take brand. advantage of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the other note is <laughs> the other programming though before sports. Uh, I have to say, stop taking pictures of the mattress. <laughs> On Lakeshore Drive that I mentioned an hour ago, it's been there for three well, hours now. It's now. a safety hazard. We're going to get sued because of you. I appreciate our listeners. We have the best listeners in the city without question. We've gotten about 36 pictures of the mattress on the Lakeshore Drive turn. That's a turn on Lakeshore Drive. Do you know how many accidents there are going to be? No, I was driving in alone at 4 in the morning, but I still didn't take a picture because I, I was raining and I didn't want to slide into it. But there was a perfectly laid out mattress on the side that looks ready to go. It, it didn't like fall off and it's not dirty. It was somebody stopped and set it up on the guardrail. And it had the price tag on it and the plastic, and people were sending so many pictures of it. You can see it on our Facebook page that's if you right, want we have to see it. a photo up on the a, Facebook page. It's a really hard place to get a picture. Yes. You're turning, and those lanes are so narrow. It's right by the Drake and the Oak Street Beach. So that turn, do not, we're good. Thank you so much. No, we, we appreciate you. We saw it, and we're going to, oh God, the lawsuit. Brian. Thank you for your service. No more pictures. We got it, please. We don't want an accident there on the turn from this mattress. The good news is, if you spin out, you'll probably spin into the mattress. (laughs) It's softer than the guardrail. Yeah. And your car will hit. Okay, so your advice is keep going. No, no. Nothing's going to happen. Your car will go like boing and bounce (laughs) into Lake Michigan like a wily coyote and hits the mattress. That'll be perfect. (laughs) That's good. Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. And sports is sponsored by the Marquee Network. Stream Cubs baseball at watchmarquee.com. And you better have last night because what a wild game. Uh, First off, Ben Brown took the mound. uh, His only sixth career start and his first time pitching against the Brewers ever after the embarrassing game with Craig Council's return. And they booed him there and then they lost. They thought, like, oh, it's going to be a rough four-game series. No, not Ben Brown and his mullet. Did you see his mullet, Kenzie? He had a tremendous, glorious mullet, Ben Brown. Mullets are back, and I think we can um, either thank or be mad at Morgan Wallen, however you want to take that. I thank him. I I feel like like he brought the mullet back. Very happy to see him. Um, And he went out with seven no-hit innings. Before the reliever, Hayden Wazenski came in, allowed a one-hit single. The Brewers, they end up going to extra innings. And then the Cub have a five-run tenth inning to win 6-3 at American Family Field. That's awesome. Needed that to break the five-game losing streak, and they're going to run it back tonight in that four-game series up there. So hopefully they can take the series up there and give our, our new manager, Craig Council, a nice little payback to the Brewers. Uh, White Sox lost 7-2 to the Blue Jays. That's not the headline. First off, another tremendous mullet. 
Jake Woodfield was on the mound. What a great name. I that agree. Guy, that guy should have a great mullet. Jake Woodford. I'm Woodford? sorry, I said, Wood, I said Woodfield. It's Woodford. It's Woodford? Jake Woodford. Why do you like it so much? This seems like a guy guy like to have a great mullet. He had, he had a better mullet I like than even Ben Brown. I like a shark driver the name Jake. You're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Woodford <laughs> is more. A guy named Jake. <laughs> no, Woodford is more of the Everybody attractive stand thing. back. Jake Woodford. Tremendous Woodford. mullet. It didn't work out, though, because they lost 7-2. to two. What was very odd was Garrett Crochet was not pitching, had his starter jacket on, basically, and they had so many rain delays in that game last night. Then they did another rain delay in the ninth inning with three outs left, and Garrett Crochet, I don't know if he had, like, reservations later on that night to meet up at a club because he went nuts on the umpire and got ejected. He wasn't even playing. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the dugout screaming, and somebody had to hold him back. He's like, that's yeah. enough! Yeah, he was the hold him back guy, like... Somebody hold me back so I don't get out there. So you can go out there and punch who you want. The game's seven to two. Who cares? It's so weird because even the post-game press conference and all the articles and quotes that we read this morning about it, everyone's like, yeah, we don't really know what happened with Garrett. He just got really angry all of a sudden, yeah. and then he got ejected. The quote from the manager said, I don't know what happened. Something to do with the weather or something? <laughs> got him really upset? I'm not sure. <laughs> He's getting wet in the dugout, and he um, went nuts. Maybe something's up with his stars. What, yeah. what astrological sign is he? Oh, uh, God. Mercury in retrograde. Yeah, you know, stuff, stuff, times are tough. I'm guessing days. he had a reservation somewhere, and he wanted to get to it. You're delaying the game again here? We're losing. <laughs> Just let me get there. Three more outs, please. The, the problem is that when he got ejected, it was pouring outside. <laughs> it was unquestionably the right decision to call a rain delay. the scene from The Notebook where they're yelling at each other. <laughs> That's what it looked like. So romantic. That's exactly what it looked like. This like. is beautiful. And then actually three minutes later, it stopped and they resumed the game. If he would have just waited a couple minutes, it would have stopped. Well, I don't know what he's rejection. supposed to do about the, about the rain. <laughs> do you think he's like the rain god? <sighs> What's going on? And like Keisha said, that was his first career ejection. So this is a picture. Usually you get ejected somewhere along the way for yelling about something in the game, he was yelling about the rain to the I umpire. Just, I just think in the future, if he gets a walk-up song, it should be, I can't stand the rain. Yeah. <laughs> Blame it on the rain, little Ooh, Millie, Millie Vanilli. Yeah, baby. Um, the White Sox continue to deliver great content in a losing season, just like last year. They're the best bad team there's ever been because there's always something to talk about. The Colorado Rockies suck, but they're boring. Yeah. The White Sox suck, but they are a lot of fun. I'd rather be entertaining exactly. at that point. They'll be on the south side tonight again, and they get a day off, and then they'll face the Brewers on Friday. Um, looks like, this is not breaking news necessarily, but the Bears are the leading favorites to be on Hard Knocks, which is the amazing HBO documentary. And I've fallen off the last couple years for some reason. The last one I really enjoyed was the Browns one. But the Bears, with all the stuff going on, you've got, you know, the number one overall pick, possibly the best offensive draft picks and team that's been put together to do some damage. Finally, this could be the Bears' year. And I mean that as a struggling Bears fan waiting the 40th anniversary of the Super Bowl next year. So it looks like it's going to be them. Who knows? We'll see. Um, the Cavanaugh brothers dominated for Notre Dame, claimed their second straight men's lacrosse championship. Kenzie, do you understand the sport of lacrosse? Do I you... played lacrosse. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Wow. How, the first time we heard that. How'd you do that with your stubby legs? D defense, baby. <laughs> I'm always defense. What does that mean? You have I'm to... very good at boxing out. I'm very large on the bottom half of my body. I, thought I wasn't running across the field. Oh, wow. So I'm always fascinated by lacrosse because I love watching it, and I don't understand it. Yeah, like, a lot of I... hip checking. Why can they hit you sometimes, but not like all the time with the with the racket? I don't. I got a lot of trouble for hitting people. So <laughs> Shocker. I hit a lot of people. Yeah. One of my one of my first fist fights was because of lacrosse. Earlier quote from Kenzie in the show: "I beat up every girl in Florida." Well, that one was in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just don't understand like basic rules. It seems like they can just take those rackets and hit you anytime you want. With... No, they can't hit you with a racket. I've seen people hit. It's just like it's just. First off, men's may be different, just like in other sports, like penalty wise. But it's just like, um, I've, it's just some, I know, you cross swords sometimes on accident, but it's not like you're not allowed to hit people with it. Is that a foul? Yeah, it's more like um, if it's an intentional hit versus like if you run into, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's that type of stuff. You can't purposefully hit. So there's like some sneaky bitches who try, you know, yeah. oh, it was an accident, you got yeah. in my way, but it's like, it's not true. And then there's probably flopping in lacrosse too to like get a foul. Yeah, to act like you got hit really hard. You can do that kind of stuff. Interesting. I would say, it, to me, it felt, but I wasn't like a huge athlete. To me, it, it's more like soccer in the air. Just like all the positions and stuff like that. That's basically what it is. Okay, that explains it to me, good because I've watched yeah. it for years and never really understood Because you have like forwards and like, all, like center, like all those positions exist. It's very, I, it's air soccer. 
Did you get any offers to get a ride from college? Hell no. Okay, just check it. <laughs> no, 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 didn't play that long. Uh-huh. <laughs> a couple of fist fights later, I'm like, that's good. <laughs> Somebody, I mean, you could have been an enforcer. Are there enforcers in it, like hockey? Well, no, like there's deep, but like I was, again, I was very good. I was always around the net. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, yeah. I don't even remember the terms. It was high school. But yeah, I was always near the net, hip checking the hell out of, out of these bitches, you know? Is that why you chose that sport? You know what? I tried, like, everything once. The problem was is that I moved from North Carolina to Minnesota. And all the sports that were popular in North Carolina were not popular in Minnesota. So then I just started trying different things. I did, like, everything for, like, a year. Wow. And I wasn't good at any of it, unfortunately. Well, lacrosse stuck. I, I had a couple. Well, I backs out, baby. I was new, always defense. New fact on Kenzie. She played lacrosse in high school. Who knew? Never would have guessed that. Great. All right, finally, uh, going back to baseball for a second, uh, Angel Hernandez, a much maligned umpire in MLB for his entire career for making terrible calls, announced his retirement. Uh, he had a back injury last year, didn't, didn't ump much, but very big for White Sox fans on this one. If you remember this call from the, the great Hawk Harrelson, Talking about Angel Hernandez. Am I introing this uh, audio right case? So this clip we're about to play, this is about 10 years ago. Alex Rios is at the dish. The bases are loaded in the bottom of the ninth in a tie game. One out. Rios hits the ground ball to short. You would normally think the Marlins would turn two here, but it seems like Rios beat the ball to first. Thus, the White Sox should have won the game. Angel Hernandez is the first base umpire. He makes a bad call, and this is what it sounded like. Uh Uh-oh. Can't get him. He's, oh, no. He's, no. He was safe at first. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Angel Hernandez blew the call, and the infield being back should have cost him the game. It didn't. Right there, he's safe. He, he is does safe. not have the ball. And another blown call by Hernandez. <laughs> this is not like Michael Scott when he sees Toby back. <laughs> no. God. <laughs> No, God, please, no, 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 no. Let's go back to Angel Hernandez. Let's go back to the call. Oh, oh no, no. He was safe at No. First. No. <laughs> well, Angel Hernandez blew the call, and the infield being back oh. should have cost him the game. It oh, did. Oh, God. No, God. <laughs> No, God, please, no, 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 no. no! <laughs> oh, all right. Three, one, two, five, nine, one, eighty three hundred. Call right now to compete in Clash with Kenzie. Get your trivia game going. And it's for AJR tickets at the Allstate Arena. They're free and they can be yours. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. All right, here we go. Huge show with AJR, who's one of the headliners of Twisted back in 2019. Uh, what a show they did. And that Lumineers were the headliner. They were on that show, and they really were, they were early. I said a little bit earlier, but boy, did they steal it then. And uh, they've been continuing their role at the Allstate Arena. So, AJR, uh, our great friends at Live Nation, we partner on this to get the free tickets to you. We give you more free tickets than any other radio station in Chicago, without question, and good ones, too. So, so many tickets. So many. We lay in them at night. <laughs> naked, naked. We just go, ah. Well, now we're going to get less calls. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, no, Chris still wants them. Chris checking in from Chicago. Ahoy, tell us something real quick about yourself, Chris. Yeah, hey, good morning, guys. Love the show. Uh, I'm an avid mountain biker, and um, yeah, just listen to you guys every morning. So. That kicks ass, by the way, that you mountain bike. That's badass. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> great place down in <laughs> south side of Chicago, Big Marsh. Shout out. Whoop, whoop. How do you mountain bike over there? Uh, there if you, man, it, you would think that there's not a place out there like that, but uh, they're like partnering up with, I think, Ford Motor Company, and they're actually expanding. They're, Tons of trails and pump tracks. It's awesome down wait, there. Wait, wait. Say it again one more time. Where you go do this? It's in Big Marsh. Uh, it's actually uh, down on the south side. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Because I mountain bike. I have a mountain bike that can take a lot of... Do da- you? I do. <laughs> but, I, but I ride straight on the, ba- the beach path. Okay. 
So you mountain bike straight. Well, when I, I, I bought you, it, you, I, you don't need that. a mountain bike. You could use a Schwinn. Well, when I, I went to Village Cycle, Schwinn level. When I went to Village Cycle Center to buy it, you know, they say like, you know. They're all into it there. They're all, like, total, you know, dudes. Yeah. And they're like, so, uh, you know, where you go mountain biking? You go out to Colorado? And I go, no, I go to the beachfront. I ride it. He goes, okay, well, you need a hybrid bike more than the tires. It'll be easier to ride. You don't need one all these huge tires and stuff because you're just wasting your time yeah. with that. No, you can get a mongoose. It would work out. Yeah. That's the, that's the bike brand you buy at Walmart for kids. I got a Trek. There you go. I got a Trek. It's super nice. nice. I don't think you need a Trek. Yeah. <laughs> all all right. right. Let's play some trivia. Let's do it. Here we go, Chris. Um... First one to five wins us and carefully. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same to you. Call heads or tails, Chris? Heads. It is heads. All right, Chris. Question number one. Let's Here go. we Let's go. Let's go. Uh, what children's book turned movie predicted the weather with the help of Italian food? Do you know that? Uh, oh, it's escaping me. I do know it. Um, Three, two. Meatballs. One. Oh, <laughs> oh, Kenzie, what do you think? I can't say. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Uh, Good guess. Said meatballs. Uh, Kenzie, who yes. said, obdi, 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 obdi. that's all, folks? Yikes, no one. <laughs> um, but uh, I think you mean Porky, Porky, Porky the pig? Porky pig? Porky the pig? <laughs> Porky the pig. <laughs> I don't remember if there's a ball between there. That's what he sounded like. Obdi, 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 obdi. That, that, that's all, folks. No, you sound... Never mind. That's what he sounds like. That like that's trouble. exactly that's exactly rep- tra- transcript representation of Porky that's like Pig. That's like you saying the s'mores milk shit. He's <laughs> like, not no. okay. You want to hear Porky the Pig? <laughs> well, I, I'm telling you. Chris, uh, sit tight for just a second. Uh, Brian's pulling re- the Porky I the really Pig video. I really apologize, oh, Chris. <laughs> I'm so sorry that Brian can't get it together. Okay, so Brian, you do Porky the Pig and then play Porky the Pig. Oh, or is it Porky Pig? Now I don't know if there's a the there or not. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's Porky Pig. There's no the. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Jeez. He's like disgusted with me. Oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Gun. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, uh-oh. That's the one that came up. It says, Por- says the F word. Like, yeah. damn it. <laughs> the YouTube video says, Porky Pig says son of a bitch. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch, a gun. <laughs> I love that. A son of a bitch, son of a bitch, a son of a bitch, bit, a gun. No, That's that. You uh, nailed it. Thank nah. you. I like it. It's better when it's the pig. Hater. Bad news for Chris. He's down two to nothing. Chris, you're still there, by the way. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Chris, no is the question to Chris? 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 <laughs> <laughs> the question is to Chris. What nationally observed day in the U.S. marks winter's midpoint? Uh, not the summer solstice. This would be the winter solstice. It's not the winter solstice. Not what we're looking for here. Kenzie, do you know? The, the Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Groundhog Day. That was actually pretty good. Thank you. Back to Kenzie. Yep. Uh, in the office, what historical U.S. figure entertains the girls during Phyllis's bachelorette party? Oh, um, Ben Franklin. That's right. Ben Franklin's right. Because he's rolling. (laughs) Okay, Chris, you got to get this one. Um, A small sofa designed for two people is better known as what? A love seat. Love seat. There you go. He's got one. But the problem problem is, is Kenzie can win with this one. Really? Yes. I feel like I haven't answered that many questions. (laughs) You've been getting Chris's ones right, too. Oh. Yeah. All right. Here you go, Kenzie. What are you not allowed to touch during a game <laughs> of water polo? I'm sorry. <laughs> what was and funny about that? I just didn't know what the how it was going to end. What are you not allowed to touch during a game of water polo? Yes. I, each other? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the correct answer. Chris, do you know? Uh, I don't. Is it the edge of the pool? No, it's the bottom of the pool. The bottom of the pool you can't touch during water polo. All right. Back to Chris, four to one. Uh, Chris, what was the original brand of cereal whose mascot was Cinnamon? Uh, <laughs> that's guess a lot a, harder on the air, guys. Guess, guess a cereal. <laughs> guess, any, guess any cereal. Three, two. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Good guess. Not right. Kenzie for the win. Apple Jacks. It's Apple Jacks. Oh, boy. 
She's fantastic. Oh, my God. I love you. <laughs> We're giving him a prize bag. <laughs> I don't care. You stay on the line. All you do is couple me, and you get shirts. Oh, God. I love it. All right. Hang on. Just give you a shirt. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, everybody else should stay put because... We have those AJR tickets that we will throw out right after Mike Shinoda. Just stay here and listen for God Bless the Baby. Three minutes away. Everybody's got a shot at the AJR tickets. Stay here. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. All right, we're talking about the worst thank you gift or the worst gift you ever got just in general. Um, it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. I'd love you to chime in on this at 312-591-8300. You don't have to give names who gave you what. Call anybody out. Um, but this happened because over in Korea at a college, a girl group called Oh My Girl performed, and it was during a talent show. And then male performers got up in the talent show to do whatever they wanted to do, sing, dance, whatever. And then as a prize for the winner, they gave out the water bottles that the Oh My Girl group drank out of. And this has caused some backlash on the university. Okay. So <laughs> they were saying maybe objectifying women or something like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. The guy probably didn't have any other prizes. It's a university student council giveaway thing, but also probably a little bit of a reach. Could have amped it up. Yeah. This does bring back a bizarre memory for me. That's why I'm not so... Really? Yeah. It, it, this really does. <laughs> Kenzie, stay with me on this Core one, okay? memory unlocks. Interesting. Stay, stay with me on this, you, Kenzie. You have, you've piqued my interest. Good. I hope okay. everybody, everybody just sit back for just about 30, 60 seconds as I tell a story of Q101 back in the day when Radiohead came in the studio to my show. Back then, I called it the Sludge Nation. And Radiohead, notorious for never doing an interview never going into radio stations. They just were not that kind of band. They uh -huh. like existed in this kind of darkness, basically. I would and, agree with that. And, and mystery. And they still do, actually. So they came into the show. I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. So they came in. All five ba band members came in, did an hour-long takeover of my show. We played music. It was a really good time. And I gave them all water bottles uh, to sit and drink out of during the show. Okay. So, and this is a peak Radiohead time, the early 2000s here at Q101. So they leave... And they all left their water bottles of different variants of how much they drank out of each one of them, each band member. Really? So I, I thought much like this student council guy in Korea, <laughs> those water bottles are kind of worth something. People are dying for everything Radiohead at this moment. So I took the water bottles and I put a tape for each name of who drank out of what. And then the rest of that week on the show, I gave away on Q101 the water bottles of each band member with the water in it that they drank out of. And, some and were, people were excited? Kenzie? What? You would have thought I was giving away a Porsche. <laughs> all Stop it. For a week, all 10 phone lines. It actually shut down our phone lines. We had to, like, reset it with the phone company because people calling for these water bottles of each band member of Radiohead. Gave each, that's I should, insane. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So that's that core memory I have. Of, I want to know where those water bottles are today. I want to know if anybody listening could have been around then and has it maybe just still sealed with maybe a third of the water it's in on it. on the family mantle. Yeah. Like a used water bottle. It's like, next to grandma's ashes. <laughs> of course. Maybe they mixed grandma's ashes in the water and maybe. shook it up. Grandma they'll, loved Tom York. Still sandcastle. <laughs> <laughs> what a time. So I guess that's, that's one of the weirdest things I ever gave out. It's exactly like this story. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have a gift in your head that you got, and no, it was kind so of bizarre. I, I'm closer with my grandma now, but my grandma always favored boys. She had two sons, and all of her grandsons were treated significantly better. And it was huh. annoying because they don't treat her great, and I'm, like, always really <laughs> nice to her. And it's like, okay. So... One year, like, as all the kids were older, there wasn't little kids, we decided to do a secret Santa at the huge family Christmas instead mm. of everyone buying for, like, 15 people. Yeah. She, being a grandma, like, still wanted to get all the kids something, right? So, mm. like, she couldn't contain herself. I had her in secret Santa. I got her this beautiful necklace. She cried when she opened it. Aww. Okay? Then she starts passing out gifts to all the kids. <laughs> and everybody, because everyone was kind of in that college zone, you know, or just left college, whatever. Everyone got bags of groceries, you know, gift cards to the movie theaters, restaurant, like these like little Good care stuff. Packs. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is this is great. Like, thank goodness, cause especially after Christmas. And like, you just got done with college, right? Like, I could really use like food and stuff. <laughs> she gave me mm. a coffee mug that said, "It's okay to be fat and jolly." <laughs> <laughs> 
Everyone else got care packages full of gift cards. <laughs> no one else got her a gift besides me. Oh, now where's that coffee mug? I yeah, want to know that. Not at my house. No. <laughs> oh, jeez. So that was fun. Mm. I love. I loved. Um. Yeah. After years of struggling with my weight to yeah. publicly get embarrassed. Oh, well, the body the positivity fa- mug. Oh yeah. It's okay to be fat and jolly. It's not, it would be bad if it was a mug that said it's bad to be fat and jolly. Well, I, yeah, she was just supporting yeah, me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, it's good. Yeah. No, I felt. I felt wonderful that Christmas. Very like, supportive. Yeah, very kind. Well, you watch everybody open their bags of groceries and start yeah. eating. Well, I see my fat ass didn't eat any food, according to her. Uh, no, nothing for me today. Yeah. I'm just going to sip some tea out of this mug. Like, perfect. Wow. Uh, so can- that always stuck with me. Seems like it did. Much like my weight, I mm. guess. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Case, uh, did you ever have a gift like that that just you, sticks in your head as the worst gift ever? Well, I want to share one from a listener. Uh, I'll keep them anonymous because they actually texted me, not the text line, to share this, but uh, to protect the nurses of Chicago. But I do want to speak on the nurses' behalf. I don't know if you remember this, but at the start of the pandemic, you know, obviously all of the nurses in Chicago were overworked, taking care of their patients, living at hospitals, basically. And the hospitals in Chicago decided, as a thank you to the nurses, they were going to fly the Blue Angels over each and every hospital in Chicago. Well, they they did the Blue Angel fly over, I remember, on the beachfront. So, yes. And I think they did a pattern where they went over the hospitals. Exactly. I remember that. They, they wanted to hit, a, not hit a few different hospitals, but go by a few different hospitals. No. But this was during the peak of covid and so none of the nurses got to see the Blue Angels. They maybe wanted vacation time or extra pay. And instead, they were busy taking care of sick patients while all of the hospital executives got to go outside <laughs> and be like, oh, look, a plane. <laughs> well, it's been a whole day since they'd seen one and flew in exactly. on one. Yeah. <laughs> They're sitting there cleaning out a ventilator. And they hear this like, <sighs> Oh, it would have been cool to see that. So I don't know if any if any other Chicago nurses feel that way, but I just had somebody hit me up that that really struck a chord with them where this is just, it's the worst time they've ever been in. They're taking care of these sick people. It's so awful. They don't want the Blue Angels to begin with. No disrespect, but that's not like a, that's not really a thank you gift is seeing the Blue Angels. And then they didn't even get to see them because they flew over in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's office hours for the exact, so what are you supposed to do? That's right, yeah. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We're talking about the worst gift you ever received based on a, a story involving a student council at college gave away water bottles from a girl band, a girl group, to other guys that performed on there to some water. And a water bottle. There For you a go. second, I thought you meant like a custom one, like with the Grove Band name on it, like a like like a tumbler, like a Stanley Cup. Yeah, with yeah. their group name. I'm like, nope. Oh, like that. Their used water yeah. bottle. No, it just said Kirkland on it. That's all it was. Huh. That kind of water bottle. Uh, a lot of people checking in on this one uh, at three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. Uh, more nurses checking in. By the way, during COVID, uh, the nurses one reminded me of actually Teacher Appreciation Week gifts. Thanks for all you do. Here's a bagel. That's it. Just get a bagel there and you're all right. Well, I would love a bagel right now. Honestly, it sounds pretty good. But, I mean, if you're working really hard, you, money and vacation days sounds better. Right? Uh, same I don't know. Bagel sounds pretty good. Same with Mike and Chesterton. Worst gift ever. I, I want employee of the year. So, I doesn't say where he was working, but employee of the year, he got a sandwich bag full of candy <laughs> as a reward. Oh, no. <laughs> Not even the Costco size of candy. It was a little sandwich bag. Was there five Starbursts in there? Oh, God. I hope it was the pink ones, at least. Oh. I like this one from 847 that just came in. This is a first-time texter. Welcome to the party. They said, worst gift. My mom gave me a shirt when I was a preteen that read, who needs looks? I have brains. I'm not sure what she was trying to say. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm right with you, girl. Oh, <laughs> that would God. pair really nicely with an it's okay to be fat and jolly mug. That sucked. <sighs> Good um, Lord. Somebody texted in and said, at Christmas, my brother gave me men's size 13 slippers. I'm a lady's size 8. <laughs> <laughs> he obviously forgot to give me a gift and wrapped up his own slippers. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, That's God. That's incredible. That's some great ones here. Well, keep them coming in. We'll move it over to Facebook as well. Uh, the, the worst gift you ever got. Uh, other ones just came out. My cousin got a fish tank for Christmas one year, and how her parents broke it up was everything for the fish tank was in separate presents, 
that year. We were all joking with everybody. You're getting a box of rocks for Christmas. And the first present she opened was a box of rocks <laughs> for the fish tank. She was crying the whole rest oh of the night God. for Christmas because <laughs> it was in pieces. Because <laughs> a fish tank in general would be pretty neat, but a box of rocks. I right. got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's Gil Curtis with your headlines. This is not headline news. It's National Flip-Flop Day. Or as politicians call it, Wednesday. A Virgin Australia jet had to turn around mid-flight after a naked man ran down the aisle. The man was charged with failing to check his second bag. China's military has developed a robot dog with an automatic rifle mounted on its back. It's being described as the coolest way you could possibly die. And Jelly Roll says marijuana keeps him sober. I'll go out on a limb and guess that it also gives him the munchies. This is not headline news. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101.